Hello and welcome to another Daily Muppets. In today's video, we're going to talk about Dan Ashworth finally arriving and suddenly talk about Ten Hag, his coaches, all of that, some meetings with players, an ever-changing, ever-moving transfer market for United that seems to be taking shape lest we curse it once again and it has to shift and adjust further and more. So let's get into it with the new intro today. Very good. All right. Thank you once again to Jevin for the new intro. I wonder if Ten Hag will talk about Garnacho's offside next season as well. But uh, hopefully we don't have any incidents like that. Anyway, let's move on to, to Dan Ashworth. So finally, finally, Dan Ashworth to Manchester United is done. He is joined. He has announced it moved all the sudden. A uh, big shout out and credit to Rob Dawson, who we had on our channel a few weeks ago, um, 10 days ago maybe, for breaking that huge story on United being close to a deal for Dan Ashworth, which then wrapped up the next day. Apparently, uh, Newcastle needed a little bit more money for their PSR concerns, and as such, agreed a deal with United prior to the deadline for a payoff for Ashworth. And he's able to join immediately. So that's settled. And United's transfer team and executive team is finally taking shape. It didn't end there, as Ornstein reported yesterday, that United are hiring Vivell, Christopher Vivell, on a short-term basis to, at least in the immediate short-term basis, to assist in recruitment talent ID, as well as potentially the multi-club model for uh, for United. This is all great news. I mean, these are all the things we want to see. Obviously, like, um, we, we, you know, it's July. Uh, we don't want to sit here celebrating. We don't have any players in the door or anything like that. But it is interesting. And, um, you know, as, as I kind of had mentioned before, United were heavily limited by PSR. Um, they just were, it was tight. I still don't even know how they made it through, uh, July 1st without it. And, um, now that they've gotten through it and a huge year of losses has fallen off, they can spend money and things have kind of opened up a little bit. I think they really wanted to get Ashworth in there. Uh, I think they really wanted to have him involved in some of these final decisions and deals. Um, I think they also really wanted him to be involved there for Ten Hag and his stuff. So I'll, we'll talk about Ten Hag and, and all that in a few minutes. But Dan Ashworth in there, really good. Uh, if you understand how it works now, you have the board in Ineos, you have Omar Barada, you've got Dan Ashworth, you'll have Vivell, Wilcox, um, and then coaches and all of that. And... Dan Ashworth will be responsible for setting up a lot. Now, one of the things I do hope as an aside on this is that the arrival of Dan Ashworth also means the women's team will get more attention. It is, he's, this is sort of what he's responsible for as the director of football, as the, as the full sporting director, whatever you would call it, is all of this now. And so hopefully he will be working on putting together something to improve on the women's team and that situation as well. Uh, I think they really needed him in there to help with that kind of stuff and to, to be able to deal with the broad nature of everything that has to be done at United. Omar Barada is set to start in 11 days. 
So United have, for the first time, probably ever, but certainly for the first time since he had Gill and Sir Alex and the old style way of running things, a football structure in place. Omar Barada, CEO, Dan Ashworth, Sporting Director, Jason Wilcox, Technical Director, Eric Ten Hag, Head Coach and Manager. Easily <laughs> the best sporting structure we've ever had um, and something that actually looks like what it should be. Very good, very strong appointments, very exciting times. And that will allow United to really push forward and get down to business. So what is business? Well, transfers. Transfers, transfers, transfers. We, we've, uh, it's been an interesting summer so far because while we've been targeting a lot of names that are recommended, that have been on our scouting lists and things like that for a long time, it's been difficult to acquire top targets, initial offerings, things like that, which of course has led United to looking at opportunities. And that's not a bad thing. Um, but where are we at? <clears throat> Let's start with center backs and Gerard Braithwaite. Um, the information that I last had on this comes to me from around last week, which was that uh, United were still standing on the idea that they can't offer more money for Gerard Braithwaite um, and that they were not ready to improve their offer. It seems to me that this is just continues to be the case. They've, they've got a, an offer on the table. They were kind of expected to make a second one. They haven't yet. Um, and, um, you know, it hasn't quite moved at this point in time. So that's where BrainFit was. They have not offered more. They were not moving it forward. Um, they're still interested. Now, my understanding is that there is a deal potentially to be made under 70 million, not at 70, but under that. However, at this point in time, it would just appear that the price that it would take for United to do it is not a price that they value him yet at. Even even um, even below 70, they just don't want to pay, you know, in the range of maybe 55 plus add-ons for him. Maybe they just don't value him like that. And that's fine. They have not walked away from it. They're not disinterested in Gerard Braithwaite. He continues to be a topic. But for the moment, I would say it's on pause, which of course turns us to Matthias DeLitt. And um, he was on our, la our list previously. He was uh, lower down. United have looked at, um, obviously, Yoro, Toribo, Tosin, and didn't acquire any of those. And that moves you down to a little lower on the list to Matthias DeLitt. But there's another reason that he is higher up. And what I had put out on Twitter and elsewhere and, and discussed yesterday in a podcast is that the situation with Matthias DeLitt is that United were made aware that his fee, the cost to acquire him, would be cheaper than they expected. And that his wages would potentially be cheaper than he expected. So that has made it into a lot more of the opportunity because he's still rated as a very good player. But the reason he was below, say, some of these other ones as a separate profile to Gerard Braithwaite, an independent profile to Gerard Braithwaite, was because of often, uh, a big part of it was costs. There are concerns over injuries, but a big part of it was costs. If he was going to be $60 million and cost 300000 a week, then this is not a subject of discussion in the same way that it is now. Um, so that's what I was told once it kind of came up and um, when I was asking about it, that as is starting to be confirmed by a number of people. Uh, the reported fee they're asking for is 42 million pounds. United are looking to make a deal. Maybe that reaches 42 million pounds as a total with add-ons included. Um, and they're also looking at hopefully a, a wage that is in more in the range of, of what they're offering to others in that position, 175 to 200 rather than the 250 plus range. So if a deal can be done for that, if Bayern will accept that kind of offer and the player will accept those kind of wages and apparently there's an openness to, then this deal has a very good chance of moving ahead. There's already been plenty of discussions with the agent of representatives who is a former, uh, well, sort of part of Team Raiola, um, but who took over from him. And um, 
yeah, it's an interesting one. I did a video just reviewing positives, concerns, things like that. It is independent from Braintwaite because it doesn't replace the signing of Braintwaite. That's not to say that they will sign both. Ideally, they would like to get two center backs. They would have to sell now in order to get a second one if they get the lit. Um, but it's independent because they're different profiles. Financially, they still would need to sell to buy both. But they are different profiles where Delit is right-sided, um, pretty exclusively a higher line, you know, he's a different profile of player, not the sweeper, more an aggressive tackler. Uh, Brunkwaite is the younger, not that much younger, but younger, uh, tall, physical, fast, left-footed, um, slightly different profile. So they'd like to get both if they could, but Brunkwaite will come to ha have to come down to a more reasonable option and they will have to sell in order to do it. And that may be, um, you know, where letting go of, of Harry Maguire, Victor Lindelof comes into play. So that's where it is on, on the center back position. It is progressing well with DeLitt looking likely. Um, and again, as long as there's no games being played with regards to that fee where they're trying to get United in and on the hook, and then it's a much higher fee again and much higher wages, um, then there's a good chance that this one will happen. Um, on Xerxy, the information that I have is that United are happy with to pay the release clause in terms of the price, all that great opportunity that they see. Um, they think that the wages that they could offer are reasonable compared to competition. Um, there's obviously been encouragement given in the in the conversations Ten Hag has discussed with him. The the key has always been to convince him of the role that he would play at United would be enough for him to want to choose that um, that he's going to get enough minutes and be a starter. There's some reports indicating that that has happened from 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 Bologna, from a local paper there, and some others that there's encouragement on that. Um, you just have to be a little bit wary because they're still saying he wants to choose after the Euros. I I, I think we're gonna get him. I think we're gonna get him, but you you got to be wary of it a little bit, right? Because you want to see a slightly more. I guess it's the type of thing where because it's a release cause and all of that. <laughs> You don't want to get you don't want it to feel like hey, well, it's just baiting AC Milan into making the offer for the wages or for the agent fee. But they're also working on Lukaku now. I don't know if that's a replacement. So good deal. United's top striker target. That's been confirmed by others now as well. And um if 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 they're getting to the point of Ten Hag and such having conversations with him, then it's looking pretty good. Uh on Ugarte, um, there were meetings last week between United and PSG. Uh, it's something that kind of suits all parties. is repped by uh, uh, Georgia Mendez's group. Uh, they would like to bring in Jao Neves. They, you know, like to move him on. He'd like to join. He's good with joining without Champions League. He's all happy. There's good talks between United and his representatives. His representatives were working on getting a deal done for him at the end of last week. Uh, or, you know, working on his options. He does have some other options, but Bayern would prefer to get Paulinho. Uh, United would like to get this deal done if they can. If they're going to move forward with it, they'd like to get it done in the range of 35 million euros, maybe with some add-ons on top of that. But that's what they'd like to do. Obviously, you know, they, they've they scouted him in the past. They've looked at him in the past. It was, an, it was a topic of discussion last summer. Uh, but you know, they don't, they want opportunities, you know, they, they look at these, like, this is a potentially good opportunity. They don't want to go pay a bunch of money, um, for it to not work or something like that. They, they certainly want to look at it as an opportunity. And, um, so that's where it stands. If they can get a good price for him, they will. Uh, there's probably nothing imminent on this as he's focused on the Copa America. And that's not just my opinion. There's a bit of info in that, that um, they want to get through the Copa. And this is pretty normal with international competitions that the players involved don't want to appear distracted even while their agents are working on the move. And so things kind of settle. So once, and Uruguay will probably progress, so it's going to be a few more weeks, you know, um, they might make the final, you know, you know, there's a good chance of that, frankly. So hopefully, you know, we'll see as it gets closer but I would imagine we won't get a final on it until after they are out of that competition or win it, which they could. Um, 
So those are the main things there. Uh, kind of what was happening here is that a lot of the names that United were looking at had been being ruled out. And so like they they finalized their top two, three, right? So like they had Todibo, Yoro, and Brinkweight, top targets, two kind of different profiles. As those players get ruled out, they kind of move a little bit down their lists and get their new top two to three targets. So they still have alternatives in every position. And that's kind of what was happening with in the midfield, for example, where Jao Neves was, was, you know, they had these other options, but they're very expensive, very hard to bring in. So as it looked unlikely to bring them in, they kind of had to keep expanding it and going down the list. And that's not unusual. That's that's competent transfer business to keep moving, you know, down and, and through your lists to um, to different targets and different names and things like that. So it's it's all to be expected. It's the type of things that that you want to see a club do. Um, some of the names they've been ruled out, you know, uh, you know, then they then they moved down to deeper ones like with the center back, like with the midfield where they expanded the list a bit more and then said, okay, well, we've looked at Edson Alvarez in the past. Is he an option? That's why his name came up briefly. And then they look at Ugarte and said, well, he's an option. And and Georgia Mendes communicated the situation with him. They've had meetings and discussions with him. And then he became an option. And they said, hey, this is an opportunity. And DeLitt, hey, this is an opportunity. And these are good players that they're looking at. Um, the other bike backup strikers, for example, if Xerxes doesn't happen, there's still Ivan Tony and Jonathan David, though I really think Jonathan David is quite a bit down the list. Um, so those are the main names at uh, on, on the transfer sides of things in terms of ins. And I'll talk about meetings in a little bit and then outs um, as, a, as, a, as a related to that, because I think that it's, it's fairly important. Uh, the other thing I did want to mention was Amrabat, because I said previously very explicitly that it was said that Amrabat would be leaving. And I found reports from a lot of other people as well saying the same thing from some months ago. And that's when I had heard it. And I, I pretty stand, strongly stand by that information that, you know, at that point in time, and he hadn't started a game in five months and it was basically said he was going to be leaving. Um, but I did ask about this because others have said it's now kind of open so I want to ask, I'm, I'm fine with being wrong on it. And if the, if the state of things changes, you know, I'd rather get up to date, accurate information. I didn't totally get the logic of the answer that I got, but essentially the idea was that if they sold other midfielders, they might still want to keep him to make up the numbers or to, to keep people in there. I don't know what that means necessarily. I don't know if it means if, if, you couldn't move players on and you didn't have the money for a signing in the midfield that you'd keep Amrabat and just kind of stand pat with what you have. I don't know if it meant that if you were to sell Casemiro and McTominay and bring in Ugarte, you'd, you'd still need a second one, but you don't want to go spend a bunch of money on one. So you'd, you know, maybe work out a deal for like 15 million with Fiorentina. Um, I think the options expired, so but you probably could get them for cheaper now. And that might be part of it too. If he's available for 10 to 15 million now and, and quite cheap, then maybe as a second option. But essentially that was the the answer that I got is that if they is is sort of kind of flexible in there as he could make up the numbers. So I, I don't know. I guess it's fluid in that situation, but he could make up the numbers. I would still say he's more likely to leave, but I, but he can make up the numbers in the midfield. And and if they don't feel like they could get enough players in to have a full midfield, then I guess that makes sense. Um, and at the same time, his agent is working on other moves as well, because surely, you know, he'd rather go somewhere where he's the starter. Um, but I don't know. That's what I've got on it. That's the answer that I got in asking about it, is that he could make up the numbers. And it's sort of a flexible situation in that regard. So I guess we'll have to see. Uh, moving on to Eric Ten Hag. The situation with Ten Hag is there is due to be an announcement over his new contract and the joining of his two new coaches and potentially the departure of Van der Gogh and the reshuffling of Steve McLaren. Benny McCarthy is already gone. Uh, so, yeah, we're kind of waiting for that. And I think that uh, now that Ashworth is in and announced, this is uh, expected to be coming pretty soon, um, you know, United will want this kind of out there, and and I'm and they they want to get this probably done as well, uh, before, 
they want to get this done before the they want to get this done before um training returns on the 8th. I think they want to have it all settled, of course, so that you're not changing coaches and and all of that. Um Ruben Nistelrooy is set to have a very hands-on role in training. Uh, I'm sure Rene Hake will too, to be fair. But uh, yeah, so this is good. This is coming soon. This will be settled. Um, a lot of the executive team are probably, I believe, around today. Maybe it'll be today. Maybe they'll be doing pictures and signings and it'll be tomorrow. But it's expected to be extremely soon. And that basically it's done. Um, yeah, and, and all set and ready to go. So as soon as they want an announcement, feel free so we can uh, we can get on with things. Uh, I think that's a good sign. I think I mean I think it's a good thing. I wanted this to, with Ten Hag staying, as I've said many many times, I wanted a new contract because I think it's the best thing for all parties. And I thought the worst outcome would be him going into that final year without one. I love I love personally the coaching shakeup. I love it. For, there's a lot of reasons for it, and maybe we'll talk more about those later, or on a live or something where be a little more open in, in back and forth conversation. Meetings. Um, yesterday I reported the following. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Talks due for senior players, including Rashford, ahead of their return to training next week to properly settle on plans and their futures at United, with Ashworth now expected to be involved in these conversations. Number of players wanting to understand their position in the team ahead of decisions, whether to seek out moves or pursue new contracts, such as the case with McTominay and McGuire. Uh, having spoken uh, about keeping an eye on Rashford's situation, which I have, it remains calm at the moment. They're not in talks with anybody else, but they also do want clarity, and that meeting will be important to understand. These are pretty normal, but at the same time, meaningful meetings and discussions that need to be held over, you know, what is the place in the team? Where does one stand? What are they? How are they going to be used? Where are they going to play? Um, how do they fit within, you know, what United want to do moving forward? Those are all things that do matter and that players are going to want to understand. Um, in the case of Maguire and McTominay as well, both are getting near to the end of their contracts and they're going to want to know, you know, what are we doing now? Um, because, you know, McTominay wants a new contract. He's got potential offers to leave and they're going to want to, to see that. Uh, Harry Maguire, the same. He's, he's going to want to see what's what's his role, what's his position. If DeLitt is coming in, certainly... If you watch my video, I'm not saying DeLitt is, is Maguire, but profile-wise, they are quite similar. Um, I'm not talking about skill level. You can rate them however you rate them, but they are quite similar. And um, I don't see, you know, uh, much of a place in there, especially if they also want a second center back. And Maguire had a good season. I think he'd start for a lot of teams, and it may be the best time for him to move on. Though I would really like to keep Harry because his experience, I think, is invaluable. And what he brings to the team is uh, is good. And with the injury concerns that DeLitt has, I'd be pretty worried. I, I am a little worried about that. I just am. If we sign him, that uh, we're going to need some options in there. So these meetings are important. There's others that will be held later as they're returning from the Euros. But um, they return a bit later. But these ones are going to be happening now. And they want to find out. Where do they stand? They really do. And how do they fit within the team? Because a lot of that matters, the way that tactics are going to be laid out and everything. Um, things are positive between the club and Marcus at this point. There's been good things that have happened. Uh, I don't believe they want to sell them at this point. But, you know, you do need that situation to be resolved and settled for everybody to have the best season possible. And the same with Ten Hag and the same with the coaches and, and the same with all of that. Um, just coming out here now from Simon Peach, Tom Heaton has signed a new one-year deal with Manchester United. He had offers from Elfler but decided to stay. Cool. I just wanted to throw that in here while while I'm uh, while I'm sitting here. Um, that's good news. I, I think that's fine. Another backup keep, keeper, and, and I like Heaton. He's a good professional. So that's what we've got on those meetings. It's going to be a little bit awkward because due to return next week, not exactly like, you know, the, the top crowd, I guess. Um, Sancho and Greenwood, two, two individuals where their futures need to be resolved ahead of that training as well, because right now they're set to return to training on the 8th. Uh, and 
when you're looking at a transfer, you can't just say, oh, well, they're not coming back because that makes it even harder to transfer them, even though the intention is to transfer them. But I do wonder. I mean, right now they're set to come back. Will they step into training next week? I mean, even if they're planned to right now, you never know. <laughs> if a deal is close, then surely they won't. But maybe they'll ramp up that uh, by then. But otherwise, come the 8th, I guess we'll find out. Uh, the last thing I want to mention is, you know, in in, in addition to the, in addition to the um, coaching staff, all of that changes, overhauls. Uh, a couple of the big things that are also happening are, of course, the Carrington overhaul, um, and part of that improving the injuries and the medical aspects of things. There's new individuals set to start in the medical department as well, and uh, there continues to be activity going on over the revival of Old Trafford. And potentially a new stadium and the whole project with regular meetings with the task force, including with uh, executives from Ineos and Sebco and, and others who are involved, very, very actively working on this. And so um, I don't know exactly what it means. There was an interesting thing with some money put in and some shares and things like that, but perhaps we're going to get some stories on um, on the stadium or some aspect of that coming soon beyond just the this tunnel revival thing they're doing in the current stadium but on the new project um I'm, so i'm keeping an ear out for that as a as potential news comes there but um yeah i think things are about to get busier uh some of these deals could hold a little bit while everybody's away delit Xerxes, ugarte Three main targets right now, three main signings. They could stall a little bit as we wait for the Euros in terms of transfers. But ideally, we still get them pretty much all done, as, at least in the case of agreements with the clubs. And then, um, you know, they can be sort of finalized later. Okay, that's what I have for today. Uh, make sure to catch up on the, the lit video. I'll probably do a live later today. Uh, we'll be out of town Thursday and Friday, and then it's the weekend, so I'm unlikely to make videos then, unless something happens, and then I'll just do a little live stream from my phone or something like that. But uh, thank you all for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, put your notifications on. See you in the next video.